Hi, welcome to the 14-day weather forecast. August is finishing mainly dry, but it is quite cloudy and cool, particularly in the eastern half of Britain. Are things set to change during the next couple of weeks? Well, I think the answer to the question in a word is yes, but as ever, the details are quite uncertain. I'm going to start by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. This sequence runs from 15 GMT, Monday, August the 30th. At the outset, high pressure centered just for northwest. It's where it has been for a while now, and that's what's keeping the dry conditions going. But it's also leading to the cloudy and rather cool northeasterly flow. So in the short term, not a great deal changes. The warmest and sunniest conditions are likely to be in the west, the northwest, cooler and cloudier in the east, where there could also be some drizzle at times. But as we head into the weekend, things do start to change finally. That high pressure's pulling away eastwards and it's to the west, to the Atlantic, where we're looking for developments. We can see an area of low pressure is pushing in on this particular animation and that's bringing um, outbreaks of rain. Some of them could be quite heavy. I think at this stage there is uncertainty about the rain risk this weekend, just how widespread and uh, heavy that will uh, develop. On this particular uh, run, what we see is it stays mainly dry in the northeast for a time, but there are some heavy bursts of rain around. Then into the early part of next week, as that area of low pressure pulls away, it probably turns drier in southern and central Britain, but uh, weather fronts are pushing across the northern half of the UK, moving in from the Atlantic there, bringing the risk of further spells of rain. So all in all, it's quite a changeable or an unsettled pattern which is developing through the uh, second half of the first week. Just to take a look at a couple of the jet stream charts associated with that uh, GFS computer model run. This is Thursday the 2nd of September. High pressure still close to the UK with the jet going to the west and to the north. But if we move forwards to uh, Sunday the 5th, by then the strengthening jet stream is heading southwards across um, uh, Portugal and into France. And the UK is now on its cooler northern side with areas of low pressure bringing that more changeable pattern and the risk of the rain. I mentioned in the short term that it's likely to be uh, cloudiest in the east because of that northeasterly flow. Uh, this is a chart from the UK V model. It's run by the Met Office and it's uh, showing forecast cloud cover for Thursday, the 2nd of September. I'm just really using it to illustrate the general pattern. What we can see is there's a lot of cloud here in central and eastern parts of England. It's brighter, that the sunny conditions shown by the light shading in, in much of the west and the northwest Scotland there, perhaps cloudier in eastern Scotland. So add in the wind, which isn't, it's not very strong, but there is a breeze there. We can see gust speeds of 25 miles per hour in southern and central regions being forecast on Thursday. And the temperatures, maximum values in sheltered parts of the southwest there, 21 and 22 Celsius possibly. Generally warmer in the west and the northwest across Scotland. But in eastern and central Britain, it's quite cool. You can see in the northeast there, forecast temperatures of around 14 or 15 Celsius. So combining the temperatures, the cloud and the breeze, it's not going to feel at all warm in central and eastern Britain. More pleasant, I would think, in the west and the northwest, particularly closer to that area of high pressure. But as we go towards the weekend and that high pressure starts to pull away and we're looking to the Atlantic for the next set of weather systems to move in, there may be a gap when we lose that northeasterly flow and it turns at least warmer for a short time. This is forecast uh, maximums for Saturday the 4th of September. You can see across southern and central Britain at this point, 22, 23 Celsius being shown by the GFS model. Um, as I say, it, it, this may or may not happen because it's going to depend a lot on the timing of those uh, uh, weather systems moving in from the Atlantic. This really depends on the being dry weather with sunny spells, because what we're losing is the northeasterly flow by now. We've got more of an east or southeasterly flow possibly developing for a time. So it is something to look out for. There may be, at least for a, for a while, some warmer and sunnier conditions in central and eastern Britain and the south. Rainfall. Well, 
with high pressure around in the short term, it's a mostly dry picture. The chart on the left shows five-day accumulations, um, and the chart on the right shows 10-day accumulations. All we can see on the left-hand side is that it's dry across virtually the whole of the UK. I mentioned there could be a little bit of drizzly rain in the, it rain in the east at times, but it won't be amounting to a great deal, so only maybe a millimetre at most. Virtually dry, as I say, across the whole of the UK. On the right there, though, we've got the 10-day chart, and by this point, this rain has fallen in, in all areas. The driest conditions look like remaining in the northeast, where there's only, only a few millimetres of rain being forecast, but elsewhere, between 5, 10, 15, 20 millimetres of rain, and that's accumulating between days 5 and 10. Remember, though, this is just a snapshot from the GFS model, just using it to illustrate the trend which it's showing, and that is towards that more unsettled pattern uh, developing by the end of the first week. So what about the second week of the forecast period? As usual, I'll look at the ensemble data to try and identify trends and probabilities rather than specifics, starting with a 16-day GEFS plot for London and the southeast of England. Across the top, it shows upper air temperatures with the thick black line there representing a 30-year average. It's quite interesting on this occasion because at first glance, you'd probably think with all the runs above that thick black line, it's pointing towards warm weather continu continuing through the first week and into the second week, with a cooling trend perhaps developing later on there as the purple line showing the ensemble mean dips away towards a thick black line and there are more cooler runs into the mix. But I think on this occasion, the upper air temperature profile isn't telling the full story because although the air aloft is quite warm, the temperatures we're experiencing down at the ground level are being suppressed due to the extensive cloud cover. So I think here it's worth looking at the upper air temperatures as usual, but just bear in mind that they're not telling the full story. Rainfall, well, it's dry to begin with. As I said, there could just be a little bit of light rain and drizzle in eastern parts of Britain, southeastern England, but it's predominantly dry until about the 5th of September when the number of rain spikes there increases and they, con they continue to appear through the rest of the forecast period which goes out to about 15th of September. But there are not that many rain spikes. As I say, there's an ongoing risk from the 5th and some, some of those spikes are quite big, but there are not too many of them. So I think what it points towards is the likelihood of rain at times, but also a reasonable amount of dry periods. Now, jumping up to the northwest to Glasgow this week, across the top, upper air temperatures for much of the first week and into the second week are also above the 30-year average, but then from about the 6th, 7th of September, you can see the purple line showing the ensemble mean dips down to the black line, very close to it, and through the rest of the period, it's it remains close to it sometimes, falling slightly below it. So the, at the upper air level, at least, there's, there's more of a cooling trend appearing in the northwest. Rain, well, it's dry to begin with here as well, but then from about 5th of September, the rain spikes start to appear, and there are more on this plot than there were on the London one. Nonetheless, it's, it's not a complete washout by any means. It is pointing towards, I think, towards rather changeable or and settled weather at times, especially later on, but even in the northwest, I would expect there to be drier interludes, so quite mixed. The general pattern being shown from both of these charts, if you put them together, is for drier conditions in the southeast, uh, wetter ones in the northwest. But as we've seen several times uh, in recent months, that doesn't always uh, happen. We've had a number of occasions through the summer where Low pressures affected southern counties more than, than it has the north, and the, the driest and warmest weather, in, in fact, has often been in the north and northwest. So I, I would treat these plots with a little bit more suspicion than usual, perhaps. Looking at the two meter temperatures, 16 day data table here for London. In the short term, this light orange column, this light orange dominates the columns 
16 to 20 Celsius, but then the darker orange increases, and that's, I think, when we start to lose that northeasterly flow as high pressure begins moving away eastwards. As I mentioned, it may turn warmer for a time. Into the second week, and if anything here, the trend is for temperatures to be dipping, the two meter temperature. So in this instance, it probably is quite consistent with the upper air profile through the second week I'm talking about now. You can see the amount of light orange there increases, so 16 to 20 Celsius. Um, the, the amount of darker orange runs going for 21 to 25 Celsius. That decreases through the second week. So generally here, a cooling trend as we go through the second week. Jumping up to Glasgow, same, uh, same data table, two meter temperatures. What we see through the second week is this light yellow increasing and the light yellow is used to indicate runs in the ensemble forecast in maximums of between 11 and 15 Celsius. So I think here the cooling trend is certainly more marked and noticeable than it is in the southeast. We've even got one or two runs at the very end there going into the green bucket. Those are forecasting maximums of between 6 and 10 Celsius, but there's only one or two of them, so I think that's a very unlikely scenario. Most of the runs are going in the 11 to 15 Celsius category. Now, looking at rainfall, as I say, it does look like turning more changeable. Here's a data table for London. Completely light grey in the columns to begin with. So 100% light grey. Those are runs which are forecasting no rain at all. But then from around about the 5th of September, the 4th or 5th, the dark greys increases. Those are runs going for small amounts of rain. There's also some blues, greens, purples, yellows, even a little orange at the very end. Those are runs which are all going for more significant amounts of rain. Nonetheless, even through the second week, the majority of the columns are made up of light grey and dark grey, so no rain or only small amounts of it. Therefore, I think it's, as I say, it's, it's suggesting that there will be rain at times through the second week, but also there should be some reasonable dry periods, particularly later on towards the very end there, what you can see is the amount of light grey and dark grey increases again. Looking at the same data table for Glasgow, the trend is, is, is similar. It's, it's dry to begin with, completely dry, the light greys here. But then from around about the fourth, the dark greys increases, purples, blues, greens, oranges and yellows. I say those are all the, uh, the wetter runs in the ensemble. And through the second week, I think the risk of rain is ongoing there. There's, there's a small number of runs which stay uh, light grey, so completely dry, but the majority are going into the dark grey or uh, purple, blues or greens. A wetter picture, therefore, being shown in the northwest than in the southeast, but as I said earlier, not a complete washout. Looking at the uh, pressure anomaly chart, this is for Wednesday the 15th of September. It's using the ensemble mean, so aggregating all the runs and then dividing them just to, 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 to calculate the average. What we can see is there's a negative anomaly over the UK by the 15th, especially over north there. So I think it's probably indicating the likelihood of low pressure at the very end becoming more dominant, um, especially over north of the UK. So it is something to look out for. So to summarize the next two weeks, week one, it's going to be dry, mostly dry to begin with, with high pressure uh, continuing to dominate the weather. Cloudy and cool in the east, brighter and warmer in the west is the general scene. There's a risk of showers or longer spells of rain later on as high pressure begins to pull away eastwards and low pressure areas move in from, from the Atlantic, but it may stay drier in the northeast. Week two, it's a mixed start with a risk of rain, but dry periods then probably develop. However, towards the very end, there are indications of low pressure becoming more dominant again, so perhaps more unsettled by the middle of the month. So there we have it. I think we're going to be losing the very dry and settled conditions, which we've had for a while. There's going to be more of an Atlantic influence, but just how much is open to debate at this point. All 
parts of the UK will probably see some rain, but again, the amounts are uncertain. It may be that by the end of forecast period, by the middle of September, the uh, areas of low pressure will be becoming more dominant, so perhaps generally wetter and more unsettled by then. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. As usual, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thanks now. Bye.